Give me one or two minutes. I gotta put the darn live feed on YouTube. Hold on, hold on. I still, still have to download. Oh, okay. Here's some song. Do you hear some song? Hold on, Marlox, I'm just... Yeah, sure. Hey, very good. Okay, we're all set there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good, good morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett for NeuroAnatomy.tv. We have another in the series of Rotan Anatomy series, and Victor's going to be talking about cerebellar arteries and, uh, and posterior fossa veins. And I'm going to turn it over to Warlux to run the show. Good day, Warlux. Could you please introduce yourself, Warlux? And, and Hi, uh, from Neurosurgical. Uh, neurosurgical TV. My name is Warlux. I am the neurosurgeon from Thailand. Uh, today we have really great uh, topics from Dr. Victor Hugo Perez. Today we're he gonna first give a presentation about the cerebellar arteries and posterior fossa veins. And it's really important for uh, medical students or even neurosurgeons or neurosurgeons. So please, Dr. Victor. Thank you. Thank you, Goralux. Today, today we are going to talk about uh, cerebellar arteries. And uh, next week, I'm going to talk about uh, 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 posterior fossa veins. I am going to include both uh, topics, uh, posterior fossa veins and also uh, ponto cerebellar angle. So hello, Harshad, nice to see you. Nice to see you, everybody. So let me share my screen. Now, can you see all, all, the, all the screen? Yes. OK. Yeah. Well, so first of all, uh, I want to tell you that uh, text uh, in this lecture was- I'm sorry, excuse me, Victor, you, the screen is small. It's, you haven't enlarged it yet. Is it small? OK. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, try it again. Let me try it again. Yeah. Now? Yes, perfect. Now it's OK? OK. OK. So let's talk about uh, cerebral activities. I'm going to show you some uh, pictures and some videos about dissection of these uh, beautiful arteries in the posterior fossa, cerebellar arteries. I think I am very sure that uh, want uh, a, a good picture or a, a good video speaks by itself. So uh, that's the reason I think uh, these uh, topics uh, are very important. Uh, cerebellar arteries, uh, Roton defined three neurovascular complexes, an upper complex related to the superior cerebellar artery 
a middle complex related to the antero inferior cerebellar artery and a lower, and a lower complex related to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. In this picture, this is a anterior aspect of uh, the brain stem and also the uh, both uh, cerebellar hemispheres. And here we have the superior cerebellar artery. Then we have the anterior inferior cerebellar artery in this uh, red color. And uh, in this um, different color, the, in the uh, right side, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery in red and in the left side in color green. So here we have the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries coming all of them from the basilar and vertebral arteries. Vertebral arteries are giving rise to both uh, picas and then um, uh, superior cerebellar artery and uh, uh, anterior inferior cerebellar artery coming from uh, basilar arteries. So uh, Rotom defined these um, arteries as the magic number, the number Three. Uh, the three cerebellar arteries bear a consistent relationship to the superior cerebellar artery, ICA and PICA. The three parts of the brain stem, midbrain, pons, and medulla. The cerebellar peduncles, superior, middle, and inferior. The fissures between the brain stem and the cerebellum, cerebellum esencephalic, cerebellopontine, and cerebellum medullary and the surfaces of the cerebellum, tintorial, petrosal, and suboccipital. Each neurovascular complex includes one of the three parts of the brain, one of the three surfaces of the cerebellum, one of the three cerebellar peduncles, and one of the three major fissures between the cerebellum and the brain stem. This, uh, this was uh, uh, defined, as I told you, like the magic number by Dr. Albert Rotton. The superior cerebellar artery. The superior cerebellar artery arises in front of the midbrain, as you can see in here. So I cut uh, this uh, artery, this is posterior, uh, posterior cerebral artery, and this is uh, the superior cerebellar artery coming from the superior part of the basilar artery. Uh, this artery passes below the oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerves and above the trigeminal nerves. Here we have the trigeminal in the lateral aspect of the pons. And to reach the cerebellomesencephalic fissure. This is the cerebellomesencephalic fissure where it runs on the superior cerebellar peduncle and terminates by supplying the tentorial surface of the cerebellum. This is the tentorial surface of cerebellum. The superior cerebellar artery is divided into four segments, anterior pontomesencephalic, lateral pontomesencephalic, cerebellomesencephalic, and cortical. Let's go to review these four segments of this superior cerebellar artery. The first one is the anterior pontomesencephalic segment. This segment is located between the dorsum cella and the upper brain stem. Here we have the upper brain stem. It begins at the origin of the superior cerebellar artery and extends below the oculomotor nerve. Here, the oculomotor nerve to the anterolateral margin of the brain stem. Its lateral part is medial to the anterior half of the free tentorial edge. So this is the first segment of superior cerebellar artery. Then we have the lateral pontomesencephalic segment. This segment begins at the anterolateral margin of the brain stem, the anterolateral margin and frequently dips caudally onto the lateral side of the upper pons. Its caudal loop projects to, toward and often reach the, the root entry zone of the trigeminal nerve at the midpontine level. 
the trochlear nerve passes above the mid portion of this segment. This segment terminates at the, at the anterior margin of the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure. Here we have the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure, and this, this is the lateral ponto mesencephalic segment of this artery. The cerebellum mesencephalic segment. This segment courses within the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure. Here we have the mesencephalopons and the, the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure. The superior cerebellar artery branches enter the shallowest part of the fissure located above the trigeminal nerve. Here we have the trigeminal nerve entry zone. The superior cerebellar artery loops deeply <clears throat> into the fissure and passes upward to reach the anterior edge of the tentorial surface. So this is a, post a posterior and superior view of this superior cerebellar artery. This is the ponto, the mesencephalo cerebellar fissure. The, trunk, the trunks and branches of the superior cerebellar artery are held in the fissure by branches that penetrate the fissure's opposing walls. Identification of individual branches of the superior cerebellar artery <clears throat> within the fissure is made difficult by the sharp curves of the branches and by the large number of intermingled arterial loops. Here we have several arterial loops in this fissure. <clears throat> the cortical segment. <clears throat> this segment includes the branches distal to the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure. This is cerebellum mesencephalic fissure that pass under the tentorial edge and are distributed to the tentorial surface. And if a marginal branch is present to the upper part, of the petrosal surface. This is the petrosal surface, and this is the fourth segment of this superior cerebral artery. All of these are branches coming from this segment. Then let's go to see the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, also known as ICA. The ICA is intimately related to the pons. Here we have the pons, six cranial nerve, the seventh cranial nerve, the trigemin, trigeminal nerve, and here we have the origin of this antero inferior cerebellar artery. Uh, as uh, this, uh, this is uh, intimately related to lateral races, foramen of Luchka. Cerebellopontine fissure. This is cerebellopontine fissure. Middle cerebral peduncle and petrosal cerebellar surface. This is the petrosal cerebellar surface. Uh, the ICA arises at the pontine level, courses in relationship to the abducens. Here we have the abducens in this in this lateral view, the fascial, fascial nerve, and vestibulocochlear nerves. To reach the surface of the middle cerebellar peduncle, where it courses along the cerebellopontine fissure and terminates by supplying the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. The ICA originates from the basilar artery in the lower part of the basilar artery, usually as a single trunk and encircle the pons near the abducent, facial, and vestibulocochlear nerves. After coursing near and sending branches to the nerves, entering the acoustic meatus and to the choroid plexus protruding from the foramen of Lushka. This is foramen of Lushka. Here we have some choroid plexus. The ICA is divided into four segments, anterior pontine, lateral pontine, floculonodular, and cortical segments. 
The anterior pontine segment. This segment located between the clibus and the belly of the pons. Here we have the pons. Begins at the origin and ends at the level of a line drawn through the long axis of the inferior oliva, olive. This is the inferior olive. So if we uh, draw a line in here, here we have the anterior pontine segment. And this artery extends upward on the pons. This segment usually lies in contact with the rootlets of the abducens nerve. Here we have the left abducens nerve and the right abducens nerve. Let's go to see no, this video. Um, uh, in here, I am displacing, uh, I am separating this uh, vertebral basilar complex in order to see the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries and some uh, cranial nerves and also some uh, branches of uh, these vertebral arteries. So here we have the lateral aspect of the medulla. And in this uh, specimen, I, I dissect some uh, white uh, fibers, some tracts of, uh, of the <clears throat> brain stem. Lateral pontine segment. This segment begins at the anterolateral margin of the pons and passes through the cerebellopontine angle above, below, or between the fascial and vestibulocochlear nerves and is intimately related to the internal auditory meatus. This segment is divided into premeatal, meatal, and postmeatal parts. These nerve related branches are the labyrinth artery, which supplies the fascial and vestibulocochlear nerves and vestibulocochlear labyrinth. So here we have the lateral pontine segment. And this is going, uh, this is uh, known as the floculo uh, nodular segment. Uh, the floculo peduncular segment. This segment begins where the artery passes rostral or caudal to the flocculus. Here we have the flocculus. To reach the middle cerebral peduncle and the cerebellopontine fissure. Here we have the cerebellopontine fissure. Cortical segment. This segment supplies predominantly the the, the petrosal surface. So here we have the petrosal surface and the distribution of the cortical uh, arteries of this uh, anterior inferior cerebellar artery is this one. This is known as the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. And in these uh, pictures, you can see uh, this beautiful artery, the ICA the abducens nerve, the seven and eight nerves. And uh, here we have the olive, the trigeminal nerve, vertebral arteries, basilar arteries, and the ICA in its four segments. Post Postero inferior cerebellar artery. The pica has the most complex, tortuous and variable course an area of supply of the cerebellar arteries. It may be exposed in surgical approach to the foramen magnum, fourth ventricle, cerebellar hemisphere, brain stem, jugular foramen, and cerebellopontine angle, petrus apex and clibus. Okay, let me, let, okay. So here we have the vertebral arteries, basilar, and this is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, pica. The olive, 
and the hypoglossal nerves. The pica, by definition, arises from the vertebral artery. Here we have the vertebral arteries. This is pica near the inferior olive and passes posteriorly around the medulla. At the anterolateral margin of the medulla, it passes rostral or caudal to or between the rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve. And at the posterior margin of the medulla, it curses rostral to or between the phyla of the glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory nerves. After passing the lateral nerves, it courses around the cerebellar tonsil, this is cerebellar tonsil, and enters the cerebello medullary medular fissure. This is the cerebello medular medullary fissure and passes posterior to the lower half of the root of the fourth ventricle. Let's go to repeat this video at here. Look at this, this artery has uh, several loops. The hypoglossal nerve, and here we have the glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory nerves. The tonsilla. The pica is divided into five segments, anterior medullary, lateral medullary, tonsillomedullary, and telobelo tonsillar and cortical. Here we can see all the five segments of this posterior inferior cerebellar artery, anterior medullary, lateral medullary, tonsillo medullary, telobelo tonsillar and cortical. Let's go to, to, to see this, uh, this uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery in the left side of this specimen. So this is another view. I injected uh, this uh, pica in color green in order to differentiate the, the opposite uh, pica. So this pica is uh, hyperplastic and is giving, uh, is giving some uh, uh, collateral flu to the opposite uh, uh, cerebe uh, 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 cerebellar hemisphere. Uh, this, uh, the anterior medullary segment lies anterior to the medulla. Here we have the medulla and here we have pica. Uh, and extends backward past the hypoglossal, past the hypoglossal rootlets to the level of a rostrocaudal line through the most prominent part of the inferior olive that marks the boundary between the anterior and lateral surface of the medulla. The lateral medullary segment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some some problem. Uh, some problem with audio. Okay, let me let me right, Lara. Okay. Can you see it in the whole screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the anterior medullary segment lies anterior to the medulla. It begins at the origin of the pica anterior to the medulla and extends backward past the hypoglossal rootlets. Here are the uh, hypoglossal rootlets to the level of a rostrocaudal line 
through the most prominent part of the inferior olive. This is the inferior olive that marks the boundary between the anterior and lateral surfaces of the medulla. This is anterior surface and the medulla, the inferior olive and the lateral aspect of the medulla. Lateral medullary segment. This segment begins where the artery passes the most prominent point of the olive. Here again, we have the olive and ends at the level of the origin of the glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory routlets. This is glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory routlets. This segment is present in most pikas. Its cause varies from passing directly posterior to reach the glossopharyngeal vagal and accessory routlets to ascending, descending, or passing laterally or medially to form one or more complex loops in the cistern on the side of the brain stem before passing between these nerves. This is another picture of the ICA and some uh, small branches coming from vertebral arteries. The tonsillomedullary segment. This segment begins where the pica passes posterior to the glossopharyngeal, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and accessory nerves, and extends medially across the posterior aspect of the medulla near the caudal half of the tonsil, here we have the tonsil. It ends where the artery ascends to the mid level of the medial surface of the tonsil. The proximal portion of this segment usually courses near the lateral recess and then posteriorly to reach the inferior pole of the tonsil. The lobelo tonsillar segment. This is the most complex of the segments. It begins at the mid portion of the pica's ascent along the medial surface of the tonsil. Here is the tonsil. Toward the roof of the fourth ventricle. This is the roof of the fourth ventricle. And ends where it exits the fissures between the vermis tonsil and hemisphere to reach the suboccipital surface. Cortical segment. This segment begins where the trunks and branches leave the groove between the vermis medially and the tonsil and the hemisphere laterally and includes the terminal cortical branches. The bifurcation of the pica often occurs near the origin of this segment. The cortical branches radiate outward from the superior and lateral borders of the tonsil to the remainder of the vermis and hemisphere. Here we have another uh, beautiful video where we can see this uh, complex uh, pica. I cut this uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery. I'm going to displace this uh, vertebral arteries and also cut this uh, anterior spinal arteries, both of them. Okay. The posterior inferior cerebellar artery the vermis. I am displacing this um, vertebral the um, basilar complex. Here we have uh, ICA, and here we have uh, a small artery. Uh, as you can see in here, we have a, a, a post-inferior cerebellar artery hypoplastic 
And in the other side, I put the other posterior inferior cerebellar arteries in order to see the perforators, uh, the, the, the branches to the medulla. This is medulla. I made also some cuts in the medulla, an upper part of the spinal cord. Uh, in these uh, pictures, we can see some uh, uh, several cuts or, uh, in the pons, in the medulla, in order to, to look the tracts of the pons. So uh, here we have the ICA. Let's go to see um, uh, another uh, pictures and the anterior spinal artery. This is anterior spinal artery. Uh, as I told you several times, if we inject the specimens, we can differentiate very small branches from the arachnoid trabecula. This is a uh, arachnoid in color white and in red, these uh, small branches coming from anterior spinal arteries. Uh, let's go to see this uh, beautiful video about this Arterias region. Vertebrales, arteria vertebral del lado izquierdo. La... We have uh, both uh, vertebral arteries, and this is uh, the anterior spinal artery. The arachnoid. Anterior spinal artery coming from vertebral arteries. So maragnoid. Here we have uh, three anterior spinal arteries, one, two, and three, this one also. Another pictures about uh, this region. Here we have the basilar vertebrals, pica, pica, aica, this is aica, pica, and the cranial nerves. This is another uh, view, the lateral view of the medulla. Uh, here we have the uh, inferior olive and this uh, lower cranial nerves. This is anterior uh, view of the pons and medulla. And let me show you this uh, beautiful and also incredible uh, um, anatomical aspect of the corticospinal tract. So you know, every one of you know that uh, the corticospinal tract decusates to the other side and some of them do not decussate and goes in the same in the same uh, side of uh, the corticospinal tract. Cusación de las pirámides aquí en la vía corticospinal a nivel de puente. The corticospinal tract. in the pons. And the fibers decusation of this corticospinal tract. This, this is known as the pyramids of the medulla. And some of them do not decusate. I enjoy too much 
doing this dissection. And as a matter of fact, I have never done this, this dissection. So for me, this was incredible to localize the decusation of the corticospinal tract. Another uh, video, this is um, dissection of the uh, cerebellar hemisphere, the pons in the lateral view, the pica, and these are the peduncles of, uh, of uh, the cerebellum. I am doing a cut. to localize and study the cerebellar peduncles. So dissection in the brain is very important to understand and localize the different structures of uh, anatomical structures of uh, the brain. This is a, a picture of uh, this dissection. Uh, he, here I, I removed all the gray substance of the cortical substance in, the, in both uh, cerebellar hemispheres. And again, this uh, video, vertebral arteries, basilar artery, ICA, PICA, and look at these uh, perforators coming from these arteries, from ICA, from vertebral, from basilar, and some of them from PICA. the anterior aspect of the medulla, the inferior olive, the hypoglossal roots. I think this is all the presentation, um, all the lecture. Uh, next, um, next week, I'm going to show you the posterior fossa veins. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, Warlocks. Warlocks, you taking a nap? Pictures that are very useful and always. No, I'm listening. Okay, good. I thought you were taking yeah. a nap. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm listening. Okay. But just uh, take a break after, like. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Dr. Victor, for really amazing uh, lectures. Uh, it's really useful, especially for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have a question or any comment you can ask, Dr. Victor? Yeah. Yeah, thank go you. on, Victor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I think uh, uh, anatomy is beautiful. Uh, when you are doing some uh, yeah, yeah. surgical approach, if you know anatomy, is going to be easy, easy and easy, the surgical approach, no matter if it is complex. So uh, most of the times we should know anatomy. And I think we understand much better anatomy if we make or not make, just see pictures and videos. Videos are really useful. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, yeah, let me just mention, Victor, we put a link for all your videos that you've done with us over the past three or four years. We put a link on the internet so people can yeah. access. Matter of fact, let me put the ink in chat, a link in the chat box of all the videos you've done over the years. And you've done a few, right, Victor? Yes. Let me get it right now. 
Okay, hold on. Yeah, anybody else have questions or comments? Uh, how about Harshad, how are you doing? Hi, Hi John, how are you? Good. Hello. Hi, Victor. Victor, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, good. Great to see you. Excellent lecture, as always. You are always uh, enlightening our brains with all new anatomy. You, you walk through the brains. <laughs> you know how to navigate through the brains. Wonderful, wonderful. Always, Thanks. it is a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you, friend Harsha. Yes, yes. We learn a lot from you. We learn a lot from you. I feel we are revising the whole anatomy on the neurosurgery when you talk about it. Uh, and your presentations you. are superb. And the dissection, amazing, amazing dissections you do. And uh, everyone should learn from you how to dissect it out because that is also a, one of the most learning aspects of it. Excellent, right. Victor. Excellent. Thank okay, you. very. You can tell us passion, can't you, Harshad? You can tell us passion for neuroanatomy. It's Excellent obvious. Anatomy. Obvious. Very good. Excellent. John, you are Listen, doing wonderful. The, the, these are the uh, videos that Victor has done with us over the years on the on our YouTube channel, and I put the link in the chat box for everybody. Uh, four years ago, let's see, three years ago, two years ago, we've done a lot. And some in Spanish, and it, some I did one from Nepal no there, uh, Pinky, Pinky, and uh, Crash. I was in Nepal when I did that with Victor, uh, and you can see all the ones. Uh, three years, I think we've started about four years ago. Four, there's four. Anyways, uh, uh, you can have access that to the to the uh, YouTube channel. Okay, Warlick, okay. back to you. So <laughs> we got we got some questions from the audience. So Dr. Okay. Pratana, Pratana, you want to ask uh she have a question to ask. Is he there? There's one about any special technique to prepare the brain to make it softer to dissect, Victor. Uh what is the question? The question uh, is any special technique okay. to, to prepare the brain to make it softer to dissect? No, just um, uh, this is uh, not easy to do because, you know, uh, if you fix the fresh brain with uh, formal tail in, in a 5% uh, percentage, 5% of formal data, and 95% water. So you are going to, to have a good, uh, um, uh, a good brain to work. But the difficult uh, thing is uh, to get a fresh brain. It's not easy, especially in these times of COVID disease. Uh, today is very difficult to get uh, some brains uh, because you know uh, COVID disease uh, is uh, present in the in the cadaver also and is oh, very okay. and is very contagious uh, so but uh, if you work with a fresh brain the most important thing is to have a fresh brain that's that's the now, secret what, what do you mean can you explain that Victor what a fresh brain is Fresh brain. Okay, let, let, let me tell you one thing. So in some uh, forensic institutes, uh, you could have a permission to work in a brain to research, for research. So mm -hmm. this brain co is coming from a unidentified person. Unidentified. So, so, some some people uh, die, and nobody knows who is that person. Right. So, the most important thing is to work in an 
unidentified person. The second is to have the, the brain in the, in, for example, 24 or 36 hours after the, the, the person died is much better because you are going to have a fresh brain to work. If you, if you work with a brain in the medicine schools, they are not well prepared. So it's difficult to, to study in that kind of brains. So if you don't have the opportunity to work in a fresh brain from a person, you can work in a pig brain. Pig brain is very useful also to practice uh, injection of latex uh, in, in, in a pig brain. So that is another, another um, kind, another uh, method to study uh, anatomy. Okay, very good. Okay, any more comments, questions, uh, Warlocks? Uh, any from anybody? I don't see anything in the panel. Do you, Warlocks? Yeah, I don't know. There's so something there, Warlocks. I have a question, but yeah, my mic is not working. Do you, Do you hear me? Yeah, it breaks in and out your vo voice. What, what did you can repeat, please? Uh, Dr. Pahana asked, I want to ask the lateral pontomisencephalic segment of superior cerebral artery. Does it branch out or the whole artery loop or just the branch? Yeah, no, so some, some, sometimes uh, we can see the whole artery or sometimes the loops. Not all the arteries uh, make several loops. Sometimes only the trunk, but whatever. Could be just the trunk or sometimes several loops of the artery. Okay, very good. More comments, questions before we, uh, we have a surprise for you? A special surprise? Uh, the, the last question, I, th I think there is a question about okay. if I have uh, some experience of using phenoxuethanol at uh, 2% for brain preparation. No, phenoxyethanol. No, I, I do not have experience doing uh, this, uh, this preparation. It sounds like that person knows what they're talking about. <laughs> Uh, they must be working with with uh, in the lab, right? If they knew that word, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, Victor, we're going to have an online Spanish lesson with Warlicks. Yes. And uh, okay, Warlicks, I want you to repeat after me. Okay, andale pues. Can you say that? You have to tell. Uh, it's I mean, called uh, it's say, andale pues. It means let's go. Andale pues. Andale pues. Say that. Say andale that, Alex. Andale pues. Andale pues. You know the andale reason. Why, pues. Okay. The reason why I'm teaching her that, uh, Victor, <laughs> is because we're gonna get a tour of Mexico. We got a special treat for these panelists, and we didn't even charge for this either. Uh, you're gonna take us on a little tour of Mexico. And we'll get, well, we're going to ask Warlocks. Warlocks, can we show uh, Victor's tour of Mexico? Yes. Say, say andale, pues. Andale, pues. Andale, pues. <laughs> andale, pues. <laughs> okay, Victor. <laughs> okay, you get a chance there, Victor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, in, in three days more, uh, happy Christmas, everybody. Yeah, same, same to you. You going to take us on a tour, Victor? Oh? Can you take us on a tour of a couple of spots in Mexico? No. Oh, yeah. Maybe maybe next lecture. Oh, next lecture. So you, so you, 
<laughs> you stiffened me. I thought you said you were going to do it, Victor. You're going back on your word. After I taught, gave a Spanish lesson online to Warlicks, and now you're backing out. <laughs> hey, okay, just show us Acapulco. Yes. Acapulco. Just yes. one city. Take us on a little tour of Acapulco. Yes, yes. Ne 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 next lecture. Oh, okay, I guess I can't twist his arm. Can't get out of that. Okay, everyone, uh, hang around. We're going to end this formally. And thank you very much, Victor. And next week, uh, do you, what, what is it? What is the uh, title next week? Do you have it there? Or? Posterior Fossa Veins and uh, um, this um, Ponto Cerebellar Angle. Okay, very good. We look forward to that. And we'll uh, wrap this up. And lower cranial nerves also. Lower okay. cranial nerves. Okay, yeah. excellent. Okay, then we'll see you next week and hang around to network. Thank you. I'll okay, you. very Thank good. You. Bye bye. Very good. Very bye. good. Now is now is the time to net, network. Happy Christmas. Happy yes, thank Christmas. everybody. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. Sí, Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. Uh, that's that's uh, happy birthday. Can you see that, Warlocks? You, you, you want another lesson? So, Feliz <laughs> Navidad. Say Feliz Navidad. They do not <laughs> say that in beginner class. <laughs> well, this is, uh, how much basic, more basic can you get than Merry Christmas? I mean, that's not Wait, advanced like, Spanish. You. <laughs> You should teach me only like for me to survive. Like, how can I order food or something like that? You know, <laughs> when I go, we're, we're a little country. different. <laughs> we, we, we teach you any questions. We teach you host Spanish. The words oh, yeah, you use yeah. as a host. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next All time I will learn. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Victor. I'm gonna hang around. Hang okay, around. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, to listening me. There's thank Pinky. What do you think of that, Pinky? And thank you so much, Dr. Victor, for such an amazing presentation. I was, um, you know, recapitulating all my memories of reading the uh, vascular anatomy. So it was it was great, and thank you so much. And I'm actually looking forward to learning the uh, the veins the next week. So. Yeah, that was a great lecture. Hey, you know, Vic, you know, I met Victor in Nepal. Thank I you, was Victor. with him in Nepal. Oh. Yeah, we were in Bharatnagar, right, Victor? Yeah. Uh, yeah and, uh, and Victor, yeah, Victor won't tell you this, but he has a good voice. Oh yeah. I, 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 I have you say you time. sang there, right? You sang there, I remember, right? No, I just uh, a little bit. Uh, a, a, a little bit. Oh, okay. 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 Anybody else want to introduce themselves? Because, uh, you know, ideally, I think, Victor, this time is going to be for people to kind of network and talk to each other and, and get to know each other. It's good to get a network, Pinky, for jobs and, and uh, questions about programs and, you know, neurosurgeons, yeah. they travel a lot, a lot, as you've probably seen. Uh, Victor, I don't know if you traveled a lot during your training, but the, it seems that neurosurgical residents travel more than most other specialties. Do you know what I mean? Like cardiologists seem to stay in one place and train, but neurosurgeons go one place for three months. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, well, some do anyways. Yes, yes. It's very important to visit uh, several surgical centers in order to see what are you in, what are you uh, what are you doing in your own uh, surgical service so it's very important to visit uh, several places you know, not that everybody has to do it but people like Yuha Chandra they've been to five or six places and, and did three months maybe six months here and and you know yes. and they, they, they traveled a lot. To, and it seems a lot of neurosurgeons, one thing they have in common is they've been to Japan for a short period of time. Japan seems to be a, 
you know, Sufjanov, I went there, and I'm sure Barbara went for a while. It seems everyone seems to make a stop in Japan. Why? Why? I mean, the answer is obvious. They think it's good training. But is that a common knowledge among neurosurgeons that the Japanese, uh, it's a good place to train in Japan? Yes, of course. I think it's uh, one of the most important neurosurgical centers. Really? In, in Japan, United States, England, France. Uh, so several countries, but Japan is very important, especially for uh, vascular neurosurgery, especially for also, also skull-based uh, surgery. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and certain areas of neurosurgery have better area, better training centers, certain areas. Yes. Some hospitals don't probably don't have aren't strong in one area, but in another area they are strong. Yes. So, uh, let's see if we can get some other people to, to come out of there. Maria, are you there? Do you want to talk? You don't have to talk. And certainly uh, we will respect that. But is, is there anybody else that wants to introduce themselves to meet Victor? It's a beautiful opportunity to meet Victor and Pinky. Is there anybody? Geraldo, Ba, and like I said, you don't have to. Musindo, is that you? Mozambique. You can't hide, Musindo. And I know that you're experienced. Here I am. Hello, John. Oh, there you are. How's it, how's it going? Yes, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine, John. Is your camera working or no? I, I didn't understand well. You, uh, listen, I'd like you to meet Victor. Musindo is from Mozambique, right, Musindo? <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm from Mozambique. Wow. I'm from Mozambique. You're in Mozambique right now, right? Yes, I'm in Mozambique right now. And you're a third or second or third year resident? Yes, I'm a third year resident in neurosurgery. Okay. Now, is, is Dr. Kazadi there where you're at? No, no, Kazadi, I think he's from Zimbabwe or Congo. I, I don't know. Okay, Zimbabwe. Right, yeah, right yeah, now. Zimbabwe. Yes, you're right. right. Not the Congo. Congo. Uh, uh, okay, welcome back. Okay, thank you. I, I, I am, I am in, I am in, uh, always. Or. But yes, I, I have three accounts now. I, I have three accounts. So oh, okay. I sometimes I, I change it from to Musindo. Sometimes I change to, to Augusto. Okay. That's why you can't see me every time. Listen, I'd like you to meet a medical student from Nepal. Her name is Pinky Ja. Uh, this is Musindo. He's a neurosurgical resident from Mo from Mozambique. And I didn't even know where it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Southern Africa. Southern Africa. Yeah, yeah I know it was uh, somewhere in Africa. I didn't know exactly where. I had to get the map out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hello, you know, welcome. Musindo. Hello, what, Musindo. Nice to see you. Nice to hear you, Musindo. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You, you, you met Victor before, Musindo, right? You have you met Victor before? No. Oh, uh, okay. You are from uh, Mozambique. Mozambique. Musindo. Can you can you yes. get your camera to work, or you, it's impossible, uh, Musindo? I, I I can do it now, right now. Yeah, I want you to see so you get to see Victor's face and Pinky's face. There he is. Okay, you're outside Hello. the hospital. Hello, I went to the hospital. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Pinky, maybe you can do a rotation in Mozambique. Oh uh, yeah, surely someday yes, I'd, I'd love course. to be there. Well, this is this is <laughs> what it's like. This is how you do it. You say, "Hey, are they taking students down there?" Or you know what I mean for rotation? Because you guys can rotate in medical school, right? You can go to other places, right? Yeah, we can we can have electives. So no, I mean you can go for a month or two months or three months. Uh, I think most medical schools will let you go to a place. Yeah, that's... yeah, it, it depends upon the schedule and obviously, but we can obviously make time and have the rotations. Yeah, yeah, it's possible because I I wish I'd traveled more when I was in med school. You can, the last year especially, 
you can pretty well travel anywhere, San Francisco, France, for you know a month or two. Uh, it's a great it's a great time to travel. Last year, in America, I don't know what's like the, how the curriculum is structured in the palm, but but uh, that's what most students do. They take advantage of that year and they travel to a place maybe that they want to train and they, they get to know the people, etc. Uh, and, yeah. and they get credit for it at their medical school, of course. So, anyways, uh, so what, what's going on? Do you guys, uh, can you get a lecture together for next weekend? Um, yeah, we've been planning on this. So we have also been contacting uh, her. So we'll, we'll no, let you know soon about it. Okay. Uh, is Prashna online? Because she's been contacting. I okay, well, Pras, Pras, right I think right she, now. She, her mic wasn't working. No, there she is. So, yeah. Pras, Pras, are you there? Okay, she's trying to get a, a lecture. I think she's not here. Yeah, I think she has contacted uh, the doctor, and we've been discussing about the dates, fixing the date, and all. And okay. we'll, we'll let you know soon about it. Okay, remember what I said. You you have, you can ask five doctors. One yeah. may say yes. Don't expect every doctor to love this platform, to want to do it. You know, no, and don't don't be prepared for rejection. A lot will say just no, I can't, or they won't answer back. Which exactly, is, doctor. We have kept that thing in mind, and we're working on it. Yeah, that's what it worked out for the average number, like one. One out of five, and then after I get over get over the the hurt that someone didn't answer and jump at the chance, mm -hmm. I just boom, just move on to the next and ask the next. So, because you guys, that last lecture you guys had, you had three times as many as we usually have. We had six hundred yeah. people in in that lecture. Inside, I'm talking about inside in the panel, like in, not in the panel, but they were in the Zoom. Yeah, that's three so. times as many as we usually have. So, so you guys got an inter uh, people that I think interested in uh, online stuff. So maybe it's just a name, Nepal. It's kind of exotic. People want to see, you know, what Nepal is like and stuff. But. Um, so what are you rotating through now? Um, current. What are you rotating through now? What are you taking? Um, currently, we're not having clinical rotations. We're just having online lectures. But oh, online I assume stuff. we'll be having, yeah. I, I think um, probably in the next month or so, we'll continue with our rotations. Uh, oh. And in fourth year, we have uh, rotations in ophthalmology, orthopedics, and ENT, and there are also the few minor rotations in radiology and stuff like that, emergency medicine. Oh, great, great. Now listen, tomorrow, uh, Yuha is talking. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you, be... can you come in and be the co-host to take care of the stuff? Can you come in? Um, yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, that just, you know, it's not hard. But yeah, it helps. It, hel it helps, you know. Yeah, I think it's an it's an amazing experience. I mean, I get to meet neurosurgeons from around the world, listen to them, and learn from them. So I think it's it's a great. Oh yeah, wait till tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow. Oh man, <laughs> you'll you'll meet a lot. Like Victor, okay. tomorrow with Yuha, we have a Japanese, uh, uh, a very yeah. renowned Japanese neurosurgeon lecturing, plus Vin. Mm -hmm. I mean, those three guys are some of the biggest. Those three. Yes, yes I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and he was in Nepal, too. I met him. Did you meet Hirohito? Is that his name? Uh, uh, I, I Dr. forget Sano. Dr. Sano from Japan. Yeah, yeah. I, he was in Nepal, remember? I met him there. Mm. Uh, did you meet him over there, Victor? No, no. Because I was there for three months. Uh, he, he's written a book. I think called White Coats. Uh, he's written a book. Yeah, he's one of the many many doctors that has. He, and it was very nice. He he gave me his book. Mm -hmm. His wife was there. I think she works with him a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, and she makes videos and and she helps him. She's very active with his his career. 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also we just did the Mexican conference, Victor, with the Walter Dandy and that medical school. Let, let me see if you know this, Victor, this medical school. E N. E N. M H. Have you heard of that, Victor? Oh, uh, okay. Let yeah. me let, let me see. Let me get it up here. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Victor, do you know this uh, school? I don't think it's a big school. It's homeopathy and medicine. Do you know the school, Victor? Oh, yes, I know. I know that school. Okay. Uh, I was professor of that uh, school. Oh, really? Several, several years ago, I was uh, giving uh, some classes. Oh, well, tell me about it, because I met, I met a group of students there that's uh, pretty enthusiastic. They helped yes. me promote the last conference. Is yes. it a decent school? Is it a, is it a good school or just average? Or? Yes, it's, it's a very nice school. Very oh, good. Do they have all specialties or is it a pretty small school? No, this is just, this is just a medicine uh, faculty, not, uh, oh, not no, no hospital. No hospital, just uh, medicine school. The four, four years of medical school? Yes. Okay. And you know what we discovered, Pinky? We, when we had the conference, it lasted all week, right? Monday through Friday, actually Saturday, uh, two lectures a day. And uh, one was in the morning, one was in the afternoon, so we were able to promote it uh, uh, pretty well. But what, what I tried this time, we opened a WhatsApp group for the conference, and people could just come in there and discuss with the other developers. Okay, I want to, I want to, send this blast, I, I need to promote this. And you, can you put, you put this link on the, on the Facebook, you know what I mean? We, we use that as like a work room, Victor. Yeah. You, as a work room, it worked great, great. You know what I mean? Cause you really can't like, for example, if I was gonna say, hey Pinky, won't, can you do this? I couldn't do it online. <coughs> and then, oh, well, I could do it on chat, which is kind of, it's onerous. But if you have a, what's up? <coughs> You can put pictures on and uh, and and uh, good messages and stuff. So when whenever I have a conference now, I'm going to start a WhatsApp group. I mean, a, a, you know, like not just one hour, but I mean, a regular conference. Uh, yeah, WhatsApp group can become you know too handy to man is all the things off stays. I would say. Do you um, use it a lot? Do you use it WhatsApp a lot? Yeah, yeah. Um, How about you, Victor? It use it uh, for lots of stuff. I didn't know it could be so useful for for things like conferences. I didn't realize that. I knew you could communicate and see where, uh, you know, lectures are and stuff. But it's it. Uh, yeah, let me show you. Let me, let me show you exactly what I mean. And I'll show you the types of interaction that occurred. Just let me see here. Okay, I'll send you an invite. Uh, but uh, you see, okay, I'm gonna. Share the screen here. Okay, you see it now, right? Okay, you see this, this uh, I'll send you an invitation here, but it's in neurosurgery webinars, okay? What we do is we interact. There's one of the developers there that says, uh, see there's Victor, you know, I asked them to help me promote. 
You know what I mean? It's like a central area for developers that when I have a conference, I can say, hey, here's a link to neurosurgery webinars. Go in there and I'll give you instructions. But, but as you can see, uh, there's all kinds of, I post there and say, please blast this. And they were telling me the schedule. See those four guys, the schedule. And then they tell me the times. And I say, ask them what is next? What, what webinar is next? Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, whenever I want to tell them something, I put the, I put the chicken on. So I say, listen, the chicken's talking. You see that, Victor? There's Roberto. Yes. Uh, uh, um, that oh, is, yeah, Mir yeah, Oscar. Oscar uh, spoke at this conference. This is Arjanis from Salvador. Yeah, he, 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 he habla en español, but it was, yeah, it was good. Okay. He, good. He's, he's doing a lot of videos now. Yes, yes. And this app, Rivka, works. So download it, Victor. Yes. Pinky, Pinky, I hope you have it. Nice. This doctor, nice. I have it. It works, right? Yeah. Nice, draw nice drawing. Yeah. So and what, what happens, Victor, is you install the app, and once it's on your smartphone and you want to go into the live, all you do is open the app, and there it is, the live show. It's right there on the first first page of the app. I don't know how we did it, but it's great. So yeah. hopefully we'll get more traffic and uh, more people watching these video. So, and that's what I see that this, uh, I put this picky when I want to do a blast. It's called a Kamikaze Blast. And, and we just, we, I put the link there I say, I say, look, I'm banned on Facebook, which I am. You know how they ban you, right? If you post too much, they, they ban me for, for a month, for a day, for a day. So I ask people to please put this on Facebook and put it on, on uh, the various groups of neurosurgery. Uh, John Bennett, I am not included in this group, neurosurgery webinars. Are you, are you gonna be? Yeah, let me uh, let me get a picture. Let me get the yeah, Victor. This is a good work webinar. It's a good way to pick up tips. No, but I am not included in the neurosurgery webinars. Yeah, I gotta get. Yeah, you, you gotta get an invitation. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, let me give it to you right now. And you too, Pinky. I'll give it to you right now. Yeah. Um, I am in that group, Doctor. Oh, you're in the group? Yes. Oh, okay. Hey, don't be afraid to say, hey. Yeah. Know, I'm, I'm Pinky. Uh, how do you do this? Or I want to help. Or You know what I mean? Yeah, all right. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. be doing if that. You want, if you want. If you want. Don't be afraid to talk and say, ask questions. But more on the developer side. More on the how to arrange a conference and and you know that that part of it, not not the neurosurgery part. Uh, so that that is definitely something I discovered this last week in Mexico. I thought, wow, great way to communicate with the people running the running the webinar. And like, uh, yeah, with Victor, for example, if I would say in there, Victor, are you ready to go? You know, like, and hopefully he'll be monitoring it and watching the news. But Victor, here's a, it's in the chat. Let me give you, there's a, oh, you're already in, I think, okay. Uh, okay, Victor, I'm gonna put it, you know what the chat box is, right, Victor? I'm gonna put the, the link to the, to the uh, what's up is in the, in the chat. Yes. If you click on that, you'll, you'll be a member. People are still coming in. That must be lost, Pinky. Or maybe, oh, we're still live on YouTube. 
That's oh, right. Yeah. We are still live. Only.